I'm sharing the Lord with you. I want to give glory to him. And today, if there is anyone among us, it's first time that you're coming among us, we are giving basically a very important and good news. And I'm happy that today it's called uh, Good Friday. You know, uh, for, for, for the first time when I came uh, to Canada, I heard Good Friday because back in Spain, they call it Holy Friday. Back in Iran, the Armenians, they were calling uh, Dark Friday, Havar Urpat, or Avak Urpat, the main or chief Friday. Um, but here, first time I heard Good Friday. And you know what? I'll stay with this one, the last one, Good Friday, because what I'm going to share with you, we'll see all it's about good. There's nothing bad in it. All the, the goodness of God we see on that day, such a day, I don't know exactly when was that, whether it was in April, March, I don't know, but it was a Friday. The Bible says it was a Friday what happened. We have gathered here tonight without a doubt to remember the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. To remember that the Son of God was crucified on the cross and lay his life for every one of us. When I say every one of us, I mean every one of us. And I want to say that even if you were the only person on this earth, Jesus had given his life for you. My friend, my brother, Jesus is looking at your heart and at you, and he gave his life for humanity. But I think it is important for us, not by any means to diminish the physical aspect of the crucifixion, but sometimes it can happen to us that we spend all our focus only on that aspect, the physical crucifixion and torture of Christ on the cross. But certainly, it is an indignity that the Son of God to be treated in such a shameful way on the cross. But we make a mistake if we place the value or the emphasis exclusively on that aspect, the physical suffering of Christ. Because although that was horrendous in every way, but the historian says that there was more than 10,000 Jews also were crucified in the time of Roman Empire in the land of Judea and Israel. So Jesus was not the only one crucified. However, the crucifixion of Christ was not that because he did something wrong. All others were criminals. But Jesus was with no sin, yet he died for all of us. So being crucified and itself is not all that Jesus did, even though it was horrible in every way. So what I want to suggest you is that while the physical real realities are horrific, the spiritual realities are astounding and they are impressive even more. To consider what Jesus did on the cross for us is literally makes Good Friday good. And I want to speak about this principle. And when we, book, when we read the book of Romans, we see in general, when the Bible says, basically, when he died, all have died. All humanity died. Those who believe, they, they died in Christ. In Romans, for example, 6, 2, it says, by no means we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? He said, by no means. 
We are those who have died to sin. How can we live, live, it, in any, live it any longer? And in 6.6 6 it says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him. So we see, we see that presentation that when he died, he took humanity also with him. The old man was died with Christ. You know, the watchman, he has a nice, watchman is one of the followers of Jesus in this last century, a man of God who was a Chinese man who went to prison um, for his faith in the uh, China communist he says that basically that giving an analogy that if you consider a book and you put a paper in that book, whatever to that book happens, it happens to that paper. If you cut the book half, the paper is cut in half. If you burn that uh, book, that paper is burned. If you wet it, that paper is wet. That's our position in Christ. He died, we died with him. He rose again, we rose again. He, he was buried, we, was, we were buried with him. And he rose and we were risen again with him. But beyond that, that what, that's what I want to uh, share with you in the book of, uh, epistle of, Apostle Paul to Colossians chapter 2 from verse 13 to 15 there are three things that about Jesus death and specifically about three things that died with Christ with Christ on the cross and I want to speak about these uh, three points but before that let's read the portion that says in Colossians 2 Chapter 2 from verse 13 to 15. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way... He disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. So I want to speak about three things that we see in this, in this portion of the word of God happened on the cross. Number one, at the cross, your death died with Jesus. Your death died with Jesus. What do I mean by that? You were dead because of your sins. And because, of your, because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. What kind of death are we talking about? We were dead spiritually. In order to understand this, basically in the book of Romans... It speaks about three types of death. Number one, physical death, which is separation from the living. When somebody is dead, it's a separation from the living. There is no longer interacting with the living. That's physical death. Number two, spiritual death, which is separation from the living from the living God. That's the sp spiritual death, separation from the living God. Eternal death, which is separation from the living and from God forever. That's the eternal um, death. That we see in the Romans speaks about three this type of this death. So when we read here, you were dead because of your sins, man were, is dead. If you don't have Christ in your heart, you are dead. Spiritually, you are dead. Even though physically you are still breathing, 
but spiritually you, you are dead. There is no connection between you and God. There is no spiritual communication and fellowship with you and God. So when, but when Jesus died on the cross, it says he took that death, that separation on the cross and nailed it to the cross. So when we talk here, the verse, you were dead because of your sins, is talking about spiritual death separated from God. So when Jesus died on the cross, our death, which is a curse, died with him. On the cross, Jesus destroyed that spiritual death for all those who would believe in him. He destroyed that death. He destroyed the separation from God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, it says, But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immorality to light. Immortality, sorry. Immortality to light through the gospel. So he destroyed death on the cross. He's destroyed the spiritual death, the spiritual death. He destroyed the separation from God and brought life and union with God again. No longer separated from God, but alive to God. Number two, I said three points. Point two, at the cross, your death died with Jesus. Your debt died with Jesus. We read in Colossians 2, 13 to 14. I'm reading from English Standard Version, the Bible, from verse 13, last part. Having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt. The record of debt. I like the word all, all transgressors, all sins, all trespasses. Not some, not part, but all trespasses. He has forgiven. He, by canceling, how he did that? By canceling the record of debt. You know what? I bet you. From the time that we are born, we have a long list of debt that we have to God. Long list. Maybe book. He canceled it. You know what the canceled it means? Is the Greek word is like erased, erasing. He erased it. I even um, I was thinking. Like, you know, in the, in the computer, you can erase some things, some documents, and you can put it in the trash bin. In this case, even if you put it, it's a trash bin that you cannot recover anymore. It's gone. He erased it. He erased all the list, all the debt that we have to God by the work of the cross, by the death of Christ on the cross. He nailed that debt said, no more debt. Aren't we excited about that? No more debt. Clean. No record left anymore. You know, I remember the, in the book of Judgment, I mean, in the book of Revelation, then in the um, uh, Great White Throne Judgment, and they came, the books were opened, and the work of everyone was written there, what they have done. But imagine that ours is erased. Whoever believes, my, my friend, if today is your first time you're coming here, today is an opportunity. You come to him. This is called grace. This is called love of God. He erased. He paid the penalty when he was on the cross. This, what I'm sharing is today, it's just one angle of the work of the cross, what Jesus did on the cross. 
But I decided to speak about this angle because many times we forget, only we, 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 we look at it as the suffering of the Christ, which is truly, and when one, who, one died innocent for all of us, he, he says, nobody gives his life for a friend unless he uh, uh, loves, loves him, that friend. That's the love manifest when somebody gives his life for somebody. That's the meaning of love. So he loved us. But from this angle, when I see, not only he loved us, he secured us, he protected us, he put, erased all our debts. He took our separation from God also, that death, spiritual death to death, ended it. So, that book also was erased. And the number three, at the cross, your enemy's demonic power died with Jesus. That's another thing that happened when we, when we read on the that second, first Colossians chapter 2, what we read in the beginning. What it says in 2.15, I'm re reading for ESV version, English Standard Version. It says, in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. And in, there is another translation, version, it's a message translation. It says, he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their, of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. Interesting. What Paul is picturing here is a, is a Roman triumph. He uses that illustration, Paul uses this illustration many times in the New Testament using the Romans empire and their triumphs. And um, this happens frequently in the New Testament. What, what a Roman triumph would be is when a general has taken a Roman legend into an area, a territory where it was hostile to Romans, to Rome, and has conquered it thoroughly. That's what is called a triumph. It's, you cannot just win a battle. That's not a triumph. Unless you win the whole the war, it's not a triumph. And when you won the war, in the, in the, that Romans, when they do, used to do that, and the enemy is totally defeated, what they do is that the legend would return to Rome with his soldiers, with his generals, um, and they come to kind of do a parade in front of Caesar. And all people, and all, they pass all through the streets and come from the Caesar, and they do this parade showing what, what's happening. It's a giant um, parade, enormous parade, and the legendaries would come parading through the city. And the generals ahead of them, victorious and triumph, and they would be bringing the plunder that they had captured from the land, from this land. And showing to all people, like telling, look, what we have done, how we have conquered the enemy and their territory. And then at the end of the procession, in naked, in chain and naked, would be the enemy generals and those fighters who have been uh, their top fighters behind at the end 
naked and in chain, they walk. And they would be paraded through the streets following behind the army. And it would be the Romans, Rome's way of saying, basically, remember those people you heard so much about that they could terrorize you? Remember that enemy that you thought was going to invade us and destroy us? Remember the, that group of people that you heard about that were saying, I don't know if we can beat them? Look at them now. Look at them, naked, in chain. They don't have anything at all to fear from, from, from them. What it says? He disarmed. You know, disarmed is undressed them. He disarmed. The original means undressed them. The spiritual rulers and authorities. He shammed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. He stripped them. Jesus on the cross, he stripped the enemy from their power of their authority. And I like uh, their sham authority. On the cross, Jesus Christ stripped the demonic power and his authority. On the cross, he rendered Satan ineffective in the life of the believer. He exposed them. He defeated them so that we can see how powerless they really are. And they no longer have any power, any hold on us. And he shamed them publicly. And he took the victory that they thought they have won on the cross. They thought, we've done it. We killed him on the cross. But actually, that was the beginning of the victory of Christ. That was the, the, the real uh, heat of God on the cross. He nailed the victory on the, Christ, on the cross. He destroyed death. He destroyed demonic power on the cross. He exposed them as powerless against him and his people. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. Now you tell me why we call it Good Friday. Isn't it Good Friday? Victorious Friday? I said, what, number one. At the cross, your death died with Jesus. Because at the cross, your spiritual death died with Jesus, your separation from God, and that, that's why it's a, it's a good Friday. Because as many as we received him, to those who believed in him, he gave the right to be called the children of God. No longer distance. That's what he achieved on the cross. When he was on the cross, it says... It says the word of God, there, there was a veil in the temple between the holy and holy of holies. It says that tail was torn apart from top to bottom because that wall of division was taken away. That separation, that death was no more there. Right at the time when he died on the cross, that happens. He nailed the death on the cross. Second, I said, at the cross, your debt died with Jesus. The record that long received of the life of sin was nailed to the cross. And the record was erased by the blood of Jesus. That's, that's why it says that, therefore, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because it's all been erased. It's all been expunged. It's all gone. 
There is no record, record of your sin. And finally, at the cross, your enemies, demonic power died with Jesus. He was stripped. He was, the enemy was stripped, was disarmed. And all of this happened not because of our merit, but goes back to his accomplishment on the cross. The manifestation of his ultimate love to us on the cross. That's why it is Good Friday. Now, before we come to the table of communion, um, I want to read this portion that we usually read. Meanwhile, the, the, the ushers can bring the table forward. But I want to, it was, I think, in our last uh, communion, I shared this. And I want to read, uh, let's remember. For I received in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23 to 26, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And I asked, what does it mean in remembrance of me? It says, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink. Drink it in remembrance of me again. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. In remembrance of me means in remembrance of my death. And remembering of his death means remembering of his love. Remembering of his death means remembering what he has accomplished on the cross for humanity. So with this act, we come to remember what he has done. And that we belong, we belong to the same body. We are now just like that paper in that book. We are in Christ and Christ in us. By the way, I was so much blessed with Leo, what Leo shared on that uh, last uh, Sunday about the closeness of God, right? And one of the verses that they remi remembered, I remembered when he was, uh, I was listening was this, I in you, you in me. What a closeness. There's no such a more closeness than this. I in you, you in me. This is the principle of that book. We are in Christ. He has accomplished on the Christ. That's why he said, it is finished. He did whatever was needed on the cross. And today is uh, the Good Friday. We are singing, we are enjoying, rejoicing, giving him praise. And truly, this is the best opportunity for us, if there is anyone among us that has not yet committed himself to Jesus, doesn't matter from what background you are, your Christian, Muslim background, doesn't matter. There is a need for a new birth. You need to invite Christ in your heart. All what I said will become reality in your life if you accept him in you, in your heart in, and invite him, Jesus, and you, if you believe in him. And that starts with inviting him, confessing and coming uh, to him and say, Lord, I want you to enter in my heart.